Hello everyone, we've talked about speciation on this channel numerous times, but today we're going to talk about it with regard to the global flood. So, let's jump right in. As we all know, young Earth creationists believe the universe is 6 to 10,000 years old and that a global flood occurred about 4,000 years ago. We've talked about the flood and a number of problems with it in the past, so this video isn't about the flood specifically. This video is about what creationists claim happened after the flood, how life radiated extensively and very rapidly immediately afterward. Genesis chapters 6 to 9 document the global flood and how the heroic Noah and his family saved two of every kind of unclean animal and seven of every kind of clean animal. They loaded all these animals along with supplies onto a massive wooden boat to wait out the waters. Disregarding how utterly nonsensical this story is, remember that some 38% of Americans believe this story, we can glean a few things from it. We know the ark was a certain size because the Bible gives its dimensions. Therefore, only a certain amount of space could be allocated for organisms, their waste, and supplies. To deal with this, Answers in Genesis creationist Ken Ham claimed in 2014 during his debate with Bill Nye that there were about 7,000 pairs of animals on the ark for a total of 14,000 animals. Three years later, Ham's Ark Encounter downsized that number to just 1,400 kinds, involving around 3,500 total animals. Just a fourth of his original number. We've discussed before how there really isn't a method for determining what a kind is, but let's take their numbers at face value regardless. So how many animal species are there on Earth currently? Estimates have ranged from 3 million to 100 million. In the debate, Bill Nye estimated about 16 million extant animal species. The 2011 paper, How Many Species Are There on Earth and in the Ocean, estimates that there are currently 8.75 million species on Earth today, 7.7 .7 million of which are terrestrial animals. We have discovered only about 1.2 million species thus far, 950,000 of which are terrestrial animals. So assuming that 7.7 .7 million species figure is correct, totally discounting all the now extinct populations that must have existed indicated by the fossil record, we can perform the same sort of calculation that Nye did. 4,000 years have passed since the animals got off the ark and 1,400 kinds, assuming animals only, somehow became 7.7 .7 million species. Subtract 1,400 from 7.7 .7 million to get 7,698,600 and divide that by 4,000 times 365.25 to find the number of species formed per day. That brings us to 5 new species per day. That's lower than Nye's number of 11 species per day, but it's still much more than a reasonable expectation. How do the creationists at AIG answer this? AIG creationist David Boyd Jr. replies that every single species could have just doubled every 750 years. When put that way, it seems like a much more reasonable claim, right? No, definitely not. Theoretically, this could account for the diversity of life today, but does this accord with known data on speciation rates? Well, not exactly. Average speciation rates for birds and mammals aren't measured in terms of the past few thousand years, but hundreds of thousands to millions of years. The 2007 paper, The Latitudinal Gradient in Recent Speciation and Extinction Rates of Birds and Mammals, points out, quote, Near the equator, the ages of sister species pairs span the past 10 million years, with a mean age of 3.4 million years ago. As distance from the equator increased, the upper limit and mean ages of sister species declined significantly. At the highest latitudes, all of the sister species diverge less than 1 million years ago. 3.4 million is significantly more than 750 for any one counting. In the same vein, the 1977 paper, Rapid Speciation and Chromosomal Evolution in Mammals, estimates the rates of speciation for mammals. Rapidly evolving lineages produce 1.6 to 2.8 new species per lineage per million years, whereas slowly evolving lineages 
produce 0.3 new species per lineage per million years. Reptile and amphibian speciation rates are also measured in millions of years. In short, no genomic studies indicate speciation rates occurring in thousands of years, let alone hundreds. Therefore, Boyd's notion of doubling species every several hundred years is out. Nathaniel Jensen, however, chops down the amount of time needed by saying there was an explosive burst of speciation events immediately following the flood, according to his 2015 article, Mitochondrial DNA Clocks Imply Linear Speciation Rates Within Kinds. In lineages with only a few known members, new species were produced just every 200 years. Again, that rate is not indicated by any genetic data. It certainly doesn't help that Jensen starts his article by strawmanning evolutionists, claiming that we think natural selection is the only mechanism of evolutionary change. He also blatantly ignores all fossils and paleogenomic data, since those don't fit well within his worldview. Of course, Jensen isn't starting with data and letting that lead him to rapid speciation. Rather, he is assuming rapid speciation and then shoehorning data into that narrative and discarding those that don't fit. Ironically, Jensen is provoking a form of evolution that occurs at such ridiculous rates, which even the actual evolutionists don't believe in. They consider the possibility of gradual evolution over millions of years as something too ridiculous to believe, but at the same time they will entertain a form of hyper-evolution set on overdrive that produces dozens, sometimes hundreds, of new species within a couple of centuries. In some sense, creationists have to be more evolutionist than scientists to maintain their dogma. Jensen's rapid speciation explanation then sounds like a, uh, what do creationists call it? Oh yeah, a rescuing device. So there is no reason to believe that speciation rates exploded just a few thousand years ago. Rather, there is ample evidence that speciation rates often occur over long periods of time that in no way support the creationist worldview. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.